It's Didi on the Spot. Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guests here today, I'd like to remind everyone that if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. We have Joanne Socrates. You can follow her at Socrates Fitness on Instagram. She's a three-time national qualified bikini competitor and a certified personal trainer. And most importantly, she's our current guest on the show. Joanne, great to have you on the show. Hi, yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. So I got to mention before, ahead of time, people, if you go and follow her on Instagram, you will find very, very entertaining content and you will get inspired to get off your butt and go to the gym. I mean, one of the ones that I was really, that I really laughed at was when you gave a piggyback ride to a guy that was about twice your size. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then another one where you took a shot and then you were able to juggle right after you were done taking the shot. I was like, okay, that, that's actually, that's actually a pretty good skill. So other than that, though, what inspired you to get into a more healthy and fit lifestyle? Was there a certain event or did you just decide, hey, I just want to get more healthy? Uh, well, I've kind of worked out but never really like understood like my body and the eating and the working out part of it. But I went to the gym and then um, in 2013, um, my sister got brain cancer um, and then I got a divorce. Uh, the same year it was final and then also um I got fired I got let go from my nonprofit job um which was actually a blessing in disguise you know at the time I I felt so devastated and lost by like all of it um but I left and I went to New Jersey and um after my sister had her brain operation I stayed with her for three months and I I trained her. I read about cancer fighting foods. Like I cooked for her. I inspired her. I was like, you know, everything you see on Instagram, what I'm doing, you know, just like the happiness um, is what I brought to her because it was such a dark period of time, you know. Um, unfortunately, she passed away in 2015, um, but I was I I was there for her, and she really inspired me to to take this on as a career and and help more people. Um, just because of, you know, you get the fear of it all, you know, the money, um, a paycheck coming in, I have bills, I have, you know, uh, so um, just letting all of that go and, and trusting that it's going to work out, however it works out, was the biggest thing, you know, and, 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 and inspired me to keep doing this and, and help people. Mm -hmm. So when you were starting out, did you have any idea of what it would be like, what, how much dedication and hard work it would take? And if so, did, were, were you willing to do that at first or was it somewhat of a gradual progression? It was a gradual progression, but I was ready to, to take it on. Um, when I moved back to California, I, I had a job in a nonprofit and I, I woke up in the morning, I did cardio, and then I showered at the gym, I changed. Um, I had like four bags with me, you know, and then I would go to work all day and I have all my meals prepped. And then I would go back to the gym and do weights and then cardio again. Um, so in the beginning, it was, you know, a lot of cardio, a lot of, you know, changing my diet and figuring out what works and what didn't. Um, so yeah, it was, it was gradual and it was a lot of experimentation. And um, honestly, I did. I used to do a lot of protein shakes and bars because I worked, you know, so uh, a nine to five job and that was easy. Um, and then I realized once I stopped doing that and replaced it with my meal preps, I, I lost more weight. Mm -hmm. What was your biggest struggle starting out? Was it the nutrition or was it the constant training? Um, I love training and pushing myself, so it was definitely the nutrition because, um, yeah, I have a sweet tooth that's a serious <laughs> carrot cake. I dream about cinnamon rolls all the <laughs> oh, time. <yes. laughs> carrot cake. Yes. Yes, all of it. I have. And so I, cinnamon has saved my life in the sweet tooth arena. So I highly recommend putting cinnamon in your coffee, on your yogurt, in your oatmeal, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I even put it on my eggs when I was prepping for a show because I was like, I need some sort of flavor on this egg. It kind of tastes like French toast, to be honest. You said that you'd kind of always worked out before. Were you kind of always built or did you find that it, it just took a while for you to get to the gym in order to develop? Were you a quick developer when you started working out? Uh, well, I played soccer when I was younger and I, and gymnastics. So I feel like my body was always oh, yeah. pretty strong. I was kind of like a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Um, growing up, like climbing trees and doing all sorts of random things. Um, so the diet was definitely the hardest. The training was so fun, and I like to do so many different things. Um, but, man, I mean, 
yeah, get motivating every day myself in the morning waking up and you know those voices that are like you are sore and tired stay in bed and you're like no but you need to go do some at least 30 minutes of cardio and then you like fight with yourself and then you're probably like okay go that's that's where it is that's the difference between people who are succeed on their journey and and ones that listen to that other voice that doesn't serve us I have to ask because I heard uh, we kind of talked about this in my last podcast. But when you were in New Jersey and training and working out, did you <laughs> run into any Guidos in the gym? Well, I didn't work out in the gym oh, because yeah. that was my biggest fear. Okay, mm-hmm. so I never wanted to get into bodybuilding because mm-hmm. of because I'm from Jersey yeah. <laughs> and I had a boyfriend when I was 19 yeah. who was like the gym, the typical yep. you know what bodybuilder, <laughs> and he was so mean to me. You know, he was so stressed out all the time. <laughs> we'll call it stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he was doing, I don't know, yeah. but he was very stressed out. <laughs> So I kind of shied away from it because I was like fearful that, you know, um, I I don't know, the environment, you know, I just, it was very aggressive. So for me to even be at Gold's Gym is a big thing. Um, But it's, it really, it's amazing because what, what I was so fearful of because of one experience that I had at 19, you know, when I look at it now, I'm like, this was my path from the start and I, and something happened that put, you know, like took me down, um, which it was like an emotional experience that I had with this man or guy, you know, this boyfriend that I had. And, and now it's like a full circle that comes back that I was like, what am I, what was I, people are nice. You know, it's, it's all about me. It was all about me. It wasn't them. It was me. So that was the biggest lesson for me in this. Was it a certain experience or did you just finally decide like, hey, I need to go to the gym that finally forced you in there? And did it take a while for you to sort of get reassess that mindset of, you know, it's okay to go to the gym. People won't be mean. I mean, that's a big thing that I hear all the time is people are just scared to go in the gym, especially women because they have those. There's always that stereotype of those big guys that are just loud and they like to be obnoxious. But in reality, that is such a small percentage. And most of the time, everyone doesn't care about you at all in the gym. They're there to do their own thing. And that's the one thing that even I realized when I was a freshman in high school going in with all the seniors and working out. So was that a hard thing to adjust for you? Or did it all of a sudden come click in your mind where you're like, oh, they don't really want to bother me. They're, most people are here to help me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, you know, when I, when I first started, I, I went to a small gym mm-hmm. and it was great because I was, re- I was really sad. And I, there are many days that I was in this small little gym and I would be crying on the Stairmaster just, you know, and it was, I didn't want to take antidepressants. I didn't, you know, there was so much loss in my life, my husband, my job, my sister, you know, it was, everything was like, so I dealt with this by going to the gym and, and by just feeling my feelings and not shoving them down, not numbing them by medication, you know, and it's hard, but you get through it and it makes you stronger. So my gym closed that same year, and I was like, <laughs> so sad. I'm like, no, not, not this. This is all I have, please. You know, but they did. And then I was like Goldilocks going to all these gyms in L.A., like trying to find where I was felt, felt comfortable, mm-hmm. where I could cry on a Stairmaster, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then I ended up at Gold's. And, yeah, I mean, so many opportunities have have come to me through this gym that I am so grateful for that would have never happened if I wasn't actually forced Mm. by this gym closing for me to change, right? My Mm. environment. I was almost like I was forced to do this. Mm. So you just go with it and you trust. And then, you know, the biggest thing was to stay open to everyone there and not shy away and feel insecure and, and that type of thing. Cause that, I mean, even me, people are like, oh, you would fit in great at goals because you're, you know, I'm muscular, right? And I'm, but I was still insecure and intimidated by going in there with all these people, yep. especially because of my experience when I was 19. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you just, you're like, fuck it. I'm, I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care. You know, like I have to, I have to do this. This is, this is it. What is that feeling like? Because for most people, I mean, Gold's Gym is sort of the mecca. That's where everyone who is famous really trained and worked out. What's that feeling like for you when you enter those doors and realize that, you know, there's so much history in that place with the legends, with Arnold, all those guys that work out there. Do you sort of get that feeling when you enter in there? And is it sort of just a sense of camaraderie and community when you're in there? 
Yeah, I really do. It's amazing. It's it's really amazing. A lot of people in the in the fitness world, they really have, you know, for the most part. I mean, obviously, I haven't met everyone, but um, I, I the people that I have met, they 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 do come from a sh- struggle, you know, and they they overcome it. And and I feel like fitness has really helped a lot of people get through so many things in their life. And these are the people that I talk to, and 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 we, we want to help each other. And even I got a sponsor for my last show. This um, I helped him do something with a focus group, and I didn't ask for anything. You know, I just wanted to help. And then he helped me, uh, you know, financially to sponsored me for my show. So it's like that sort of thing where you just talk to people, and you're like, oh, I'll help you, okay? And Absolutely. then how they help you, but you know, it, it's all. And that's, it, it's amazing. And, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't expect that at all, which was such a, a great thing that happened. You, um, could, you couldn't have said that better because doing this podcast, I learned that firsthand, just talking to people and then they tell their friends and then you get more people that want to watch or want to be on. It really is just about communicating and just being nice to people. I mean, most people generally are nice people deep down. And if you're just nice to them, they're willing to help you out and do stuff. So I think that's one of the most important lessons in life that I've learned so far is just, just be nice, be kind to people. Don't be a dick. And that's, that's, that's just basically it. So at what point in your training did you all of a sudden realize like, Oh my God, I look great. Maybe I should like compete in a show. Was that a, was there a certain time or did someone just come up and suggest it to you? Uh, well that old small gym that I mm-hmm. referred to, I had a trainer there, uh, Michael Kerthred, who, uh, he trained like John Cena and like mm-hmm. he's from Boston. He's like one of the guys, guys. And he's, he was like, you should compete. You should compete. I'm like, are you crazy? I was like, I'm so afraid to like, I mean, you want me to go on stage and be judged by ju- judges? <laughs> like this is my biggest fear, mm-hmm. right? Is to be judged by people. It's mm-hmm. like an insecure, you know, like they're looking at me and like, to, you know, I don't know. So I decided to, and, and, and I was like, okay, maybe this is a big fear of mine and and there's something to this where I need to overcome this because Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's silly, right? I I mean, it's hard. It's hard to get up on stage. So for me, it was challenging myself to, to overcome this fear, to put on this G string bikini, you know, (laughs) because like, I mean, where I'm like the one that's like going to the beach, that's like covering up, you know, and I'm like, so I never look at myself and I'm like, wow, you are, (laughs) you know, maybe now, but, (laughs) but back then, you know, I was struggling because I, my body was still, you know, I had a lot of fat on my body and I didn't know how to build muscle. I didn't know what to eat. So, and then the, the catalyst was just that fear thing. I was like, no, you're, you can do this, like, just do it. And then and then I, I don't know what, after the first one, I was like, I'm never doing this again. This is horrible. I was here all day. I'm spray tan. I stink. My arms are green. Like, I don't know what was going on. It was, it was like, I was having a meltdown. <laughs> and then after that, I was like, that was really fun. So I want to do it again. And what I have gained from competing spiritually and mentally because of like the discipline Mm -hmm. that is needed and and the the amount of time I spend by myself because I can't really go out and eat out and party or you know not that I do that much anyway but like I couldn't even go out and eat a you know eggs out because of all the salt they put in so um I and drinking water and just eating clean I just I felt really open like I felt really open to just like just inspire people and, and, and just feel like different energy, you know, it's like, um, I I can't really explain it, but it's like, it's like a different level because of the discipline Mm -hmm. and and in my mind, you know, and and, and I feel so strong and Mm -hmm. powerful this way. Cause when you say no to yourself and then you feel good about it, it's like something happens. Mm -hmm. And if you continually do that, it's almost like you're you're like really honoring yourself and taking care of yourself instead of like instead of doing something and then regretting it later, right? And then you're torturing yourself. It's a different feeling. Um, and then now I'm at the place where if I do eat a Reese's peanut butter cup, which I did yesterday, um, I'm not torturing myself like I used to do when I was in my 20s. You know, I'd be like, oh, why did I eat that? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm fat. I'm going to, you know, and then I just, it's like a cycle and then you can't let it go. So it's just about making better decisions in the moment 
Did that answer your question? Yeah, know. absolutely. And can I say just just as a compliment that you are, everyone look at her and look at what working out does. She doesn't look a day older than twenty five. <laughs> so that's the benefit. Yes, that's the benefits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> at what point? I've always wanted to know mentally, I mean, you're so used to being maybe in a less less muscular and less strong body for the vast majority of your life. Is it hard mentally to sort of adjust to when you get big and strong, to sort of adjust to that, that that's your new way of life when you're looking in the mirror and you see all those muscles and you're, you're just never used to seeing that? Was that tough for you to sort of adjust to that? Yes. Well, honestly, I've always had veins. Mm -hmm. Like I was always very vascular and growing up, I was a little bit shy of showing my arms Mm -hmm. because I thought they were too manly. And the other girls didn't have these types of arms and weird, you know, and I was like, Oh my God, am I like the incredible Hulk? Like, am I like, I would eat and I would like Hulk out, you know, I'm like, (laughs) what's going on? So, (laughs) so, um, I was so insecure. Um, I feel normal at gold, gold's gym, you know, I, I feel like, okay, like, but you know, cause everybody's kind of has muscles and stuff. So I'm like, I feel like I fit in there. Um, but a lot of times it was a struggle. It was a big insecurity of mine. And even now building muscle and leaning out for shows, I'm really lean and I have low body fat. But when I start eating again and, and working out, I, I get bigger. So, and then I get insecure that I am looking too manly, you know, or big, you know, but that's my own. And I know I'm not like, you know, I have, I have, I'm toned. Um, but it's, it's all in, it's all in our heads Mm -hmm. basically. So now I look at myself and I say, okay, this is a good, I like, you know, you're, you look good. Like you, you're filling out and now we build muscle. And then you you know how to lean out and lose weight if you want to. This is what I say to myself. So appreciate yourself for what you're grow- you're doing now. Love your body as it is. And if you want it to be leaner, you know how to eat and what to do. <laughs> it's just a choice, right? Yep. So the choices we make in our lives is what we need to be happy with, even if it's like the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup I ate yesterday. Yeah. So what was your first prep like? Was it just a huge shock to the system or had you like slowly introduced a more healthy, balanced nutrition to you so it wasn't that bad? What was the feeling like during your first prep? Uh, The first prep, um, yeah, it was the cravings were intense, Mm -hmm. you know, because you you go from eating whatever and then also eating every three hours and not – Snacking in between when you're really hungry was hard. And that's when you just, you know, I would just drink a lot of water in between those times um, just so that I would stay on point. And then water makes you feel full so you're not starving and then you get your next meal. But my body is like clockwork now. When I first started, it was just adjusting to it. And like I said, I did a lot of protein shakes and then I figured out like whey hurts my stomach. So and then I was like getting bloated and like, regular oats I was eating or rice cakes I had to get gluten free because then I figured out okay my stomach doesn't feel good you know so it's all experimenting and then you're like and and you you have to basically cut everything out and then fill it in with good stuff Mm -hmm. and then see what makes you feel good and what makes you feel like shit the first time you put the tanner on was it a huge shock to you to see your muscles really pop out like that and see like muscles that you didn't know that you had we always have i always love to ask that question and people are usually generally shocked was it a huge <laughs> shock to you or or because some people are naturally without the tanner they look just as good as with the tanner on what was that experience like for you the spray tan yeah yeah that was that was definitely an interesting experience like standing in a room with a bunch of naked girls getting sprayed <laughs> everywhere <laughs> um but I, yeah, the, I couldn't believe all the the muscles that I have, you know, especially in my back Mm. this recent time, um, that I've seen, you know, it's, it's amazing what our bodies are capable of, Mm. you know, and that's, that's what excites me the most about doing this now. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was what was the question <laughs> just like uh what was that feeling sort of like when you kind of realized like hey i have more muscles than i actually thought and you put the tan on was that just a feeling of just like oh, oh my yeah. god yeah yeah the first coat yeah, yeah. the third i'm like yeah. get this disgusting shit yeah. <laughs> but the first coat is like i feel i'm like woo, yes. <laughs> i'm like tan and ripped <laughs> 
that yeah. guy's shredded? So I, uh, I, my favorite question to ask mainly the bands that we have on, but it applies to health and fitness too also, is what's it like performing live? What's that feeling like? And that also applies to health and fitness because I like to ask, when you're on stage, what is that feeling like? I mean, most people, the reason I love having people like you on is because most people have no idea the hard work and dedication that you guys go through for shows and just the daily life, just how much hard work it is. And when you're finally able to show off all that hard work on stage, what is that feeling like for you personally? Personally, it terrifies me to get up there. And, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I was, I was more of a tomboy growing up. So the whole, like the pageant, yeah. like girly thing is, it was so tough for me. Um, but I, you know, you have to practice and practice and moving and, um, but it's like an adrenaline, it's like adrenaline, you know, you're like, oh, oh, you know, like, oh my God, like, I can't even imagine, like I know Olympia was just last weekend, but I can't even imagine what that's like to be on that stage. You know, I have this like little stage, but, and it, it's still, you know, you like take a deep breath and you're like, okay, you worked hard for, you know, it's like you, co you coach yourself, you have to think mm -hmm. such in a way that you're like, get out there and show it off and you worked hard for it and it doesn't matter what anyone you know you just be confident and stay present you know try not to like go through it because I think a lot of times with me nerves will play into it and then I try to like rush through it you know so, like to get off but just to stay confident how hard were the heels to walk on when you were on the stage Oh, those clear stripper heels? Yeah. Uh, they were great. Well, first, I have three pairs now. So oh. it went from, like, the the Barbie doll one yeah. to the one with straps to a little lower, <laughs> and now, like, lower. I'm like, oh, my God. And my calves were really on fire after. I can say we talked before this, and she has a calf split, and I told her I was super jealous, and she was she doesn't even train him, so everyone can now get jealous and just get angry now that she doesn't have to train him. But speaking of which, when you were done with your show, what was your what is your go to uh, cheat meal after the show? Uh, usually a, a burger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, I usually eat granola or um, a cinnamon bun. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this time I was craving pistachio cake. So I found a pistachio cake mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh oh, wow. that I really enjoyed. Do you like the travel that goes along with bodybuilding? Because bodybuilding has shows all over the country. Does the travel excite you? This was the first time that I actually traveled to a show twice. And um, if I had like a meal prep sponsor, I probably would like it better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but because I, you know, I need to prep, all, I, I do all my meals. Um, so that, that's just like the most challenging is like getting that all situated. Plus I have like low energy at this point mm -hmm. cause it's like three days before the show. So my calories are decreased and I'm still training and doing cardio, you know? So it's like my brain is, I don't know, it's like a fog, you know? So just that the preparation to travel is, is good, but I love traveling. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love travel. I love meeting new people and I love like going out and like talking to people and Yeah. One of the questions that I also just absolutely love to ask and hear the answers to is that people don't realize, too, when you're competing, you've manipulated your body by dieting and working out excessively, <laughs> and you're not going to look like that forever. Most people can only maintain it for probably like a week or so afterwards. How do you mentally maintain or how do you deal with that fact of knowing that, hey, I'm not going to look this good forever. I am going to put on weight. Is that a, is that a struggle for you, and how do you deal with that? Yeah, it is a struggle. Um, I've gotten a lot better at it now uh, in the in the first show that I did, I probably, I think I gained 10 pounds in three days. You know, my body, it was, and my body, I didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. I, it was, it was not good. So now I've learned to kind of reverse diet in a more healthier way where I'm not overeating. Like even if I do get a burger, I'll eat half of it. And then, you know, some sweet potato fries, you know, um, so that I'm not like completely, stuffing myself and then I'll eat the other half later that's why when I went to Italy I made a joke because after the first competition I went to Italy and I was like can I get this to go and they looked at me like it was crazy <laughs> they're like what you, you must eat this all no I'm like I can't <laughs> you know so and I wanted dessert um so yeah it was it was a real struggle so my my competition weight is about 105 mm -hmm. and right now I'm 115 oh. So I've gained 10 pounds, 8 to 10 pounds over the course of three weeks, mm -hmm. which is a lot healthier than doing it in three days. Yeah. Um, so I feel a lot better. I have more energy. 
Uh, my the only thing that I have been slacking on is drinking water. So yeah. uh, when I drink at least three water, three liters of water a day, it it helps kind of reset my system and flush out whatever cheat I had or whatever. So. Absolutely. So one of the things that I also like to just wonder too is just the psyche about bodybuilding is when you've worked your butt off for a show, when you've given it all, trained as much as you can, done as much cardio, and then after a show, normally a lot of the response that I get from people is like they always feel like they need to do more for the next show. How mentally do you reason that? Because if you think that you've done all that you can do and then you still think that there's still more that you that you have to do for the next show, how do you prepare yourself mentally then for that more training session? Because if you think that you've done it all, how, how does that work? Um, well, I never think that I've done it all. That's the first thing. Um, so I always feel like there's room for improvement in... I don't even want to say necessarily... Uh, my body, you know, because I think that's a byproduct of what I'm thinking mentally, right? So my my improvement has to start here. Mm -hmm. So it starts here, and then I'm like, okay, like what can we focus on, or you know, how can I um, maintain one twelve for this period of time, and if I want to build muscle, so it's more like maybe I can, you know, my, I'm always focused on my glutes because that's my weakest point. I I think for myself. Um, and that's what I work on mostly. It's like the glute, the hamstring, tie-in, like to lift them and keeping everything, you know, up higher is my goal <laughs> without surgery. <laughs> oh. Gravity seems to take over. Yes, I don't know if you do this. How old are you? I'm 24. Oh, see, yeah. So gravity seems to take over, especially for us ladies. And then the, the glute department, the men too. Yes. So the, those are, that's what we, you know, at a young age, I would say that's what you should start working on um, now. Yeah. At what <laughs> point, at what point did you decide to take it into training and helping train people? Was it early on or did it take a while for you to sort of say, hey, maybe I can help others out too? So after um, uh, my sister passed away, after, after that, I came back to California and I was working in, at a school mm -hmm. raising money for them. Um, cause that, that was my job in nonprofits for 10 years. I raised money for homeless kids and arts and all, all sorts of stuff, boys and girls clubs. So, uh, I worked at a school and then two months into my job, my, my boss and the head of the school got into an argument. So then they kind of let the department go, you know, and, and so maybe that was another sign, you know, you get, I have to be forced, right? Um, so, and then at that point I was, I said to myself, this is it, you know, this, this, you have to do this for, for yourself. And it's always been on my mind. Cause I, I kept hearing my sister say, you're so good at this show. You can help people doing this. And I kept hearing it and hearing it, but it's, I, I guess I didn't believe in myself. Basically. It's hard to say that, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's hard to say this Absolutely. out loud. I didn't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't. And that's sad because as humans, we want you, you, this is how we live. You, you, you have to believe in yourself to get anything done. Absolutely. So at that moment when I was let go and, and, you know, I still had to work and raise money for them, which was, it was just tough. And I knew at that point that after this, I will, and I started to kind of, put it out there and then get certified. And then I, and then I was like, okay, what well, if I have to live in a tent on the beach in California? Cause like I'm broke. Fine. <laughs> and that's when it all happened. When you have no attachment mm -hmm. to anything and you let go and believe in yourself, that's, that's where you can, can make things happen. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Yep. So I love to ask trainers this, what is the most popular excuse or most, or the most used excuse that you get from people as to why they don't want to, you know, step up and get a more healthy and fit lifestyle? Um, time. Mm -hmm. People say they don't have time. They don't have time, you know, but I, I don't know. I, I don't understand that because I'm like, well, you have time to watch TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you have time to go out with your friends. <laughs> Do you have time to shop? <laughs> like what, what it's just priorities. Yep. 
So time is the biggest thing. Like, oh, I don't have time for that. I can't meal prep or, you know, you know, it's, 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 there's just excuses because you can wake up 20 minutes early. You know, there's ways when there's a will, there's a way. So, um, but that's it. Time, I think. Speaking time. of time, was it hard when you were starting out when you're usually in the gym, you Fridays and Saturdays when your friends might be going out, was that hard for you to adjust to at first or were you kind of already just all in where you didn't really care about that? Um, I felt at first it was hard because, yeah, I mean, there were so many holidays, you know, like Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's where I'm like, you know, drinking water and, you know, but um, in those moments is where I feel felt that I I grew the most mm -hmm. as a as a human because I, as a person because I didn't you know it was like wow like the fear of missing out yep you know yep. I, I had that and then I was like what am I missing out on because when I do go out it's like okay this is great mm -hmm. but and then it's there yeah so if I mentally I was like that will be there you need to do this for yourself so but that's always going to be there you can always go out and drink that's always there so that's that's basically how I got through that because it was a struggle. And then I feel like now that I'm not on prep, I was like, do I have any friends? <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know if I have friends. <laughs> have you found it hard? Like you said, people don't also realize that the health and fitness lifestyle, it is very, it can be time consuming and it's such dedication. Have you found it hard to sort of maintain a balance between like we were, we were sort of talking about having that health and fit lifestyle and then also sort of having a social life and having own like you time. Has that been a struggle? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that a lot of people look at the uh, fitness world or bodybuilders as like we're like selfish people, you know, because we we really, you know, it's like about our meals and what time we're eating and our workouts. Um, but yeah, the balance is, I I really try to maintain a balance so that for so that I could be fulfilled in my life. You know, I can't, I don't want to just focus so much on this that I miss all of this other great stuff that happens in life you know I'm not um so there has to be balance or else you you'll get burnt out on one thing and then you won't want to do it anymore you'll be like I fucking hate that thing mm -hmm. absolutely so I love to ask when you were in Italy what was the different were people reacting different to your to your muscles and your overall body in Italy than you usually get in the United States was it a different reaction from people oh yeah I was like an alien. Yeah. I, honestly, I, like people were just staring at me and that I think I wrote a post about this because um, because of my insecurity growing up of how I looked, my veins and all this. So having people stare at me and look at me because when I was eating sugar and carbs and this and that, like my veins were exploding. Yeah. So I and they were looking at but I would just instead of shying away, I would just say hi, yeah. you know, I just be like, hi, you know, they're staring at me. So I'm like, instead of looking away, embarrassed I just approached them so and then they would be like oh you work out <laughs> you know or like like they would ask me questions um because it's not you know my I was really in great shape it was like the day after the competition so um yeah it was it was it was it was an interesting experience to say the least have you found that you've had to somewhat act nicer to strangers than you normally would just because there is that sort of stereotype that people who are super muscular are usually not going to be like so nice to people? Have you found that you've had to be a little bit more nicer than you normally would have if you weren't as muscular and as in good a shape as you are? Um, I don't I, I feel like I'm just nice to people because of that's who I am. Yeah. But um, I feel like I get more attention mm -hmm. because of how I look, mm -hmm. which is I feel I'm taking this as an opportunity to show them that, uh, you know, pretty girls or muscular girls or whatever, whatever label you want to put on me, you know, um, are still nice yeah. and friendly and down to earth. You know, it's, it's we're not, I'm no different than mm -hmm. anyone else. I just have, I just, I just talk to myself differently yeah. than most people mm -hmm. now. Now, <laughs> not then. <laughs> now, <laughs> this has been a long journey. Trust me, <laughs> and I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> My favorite question to ask is clothes. How have you dealt with the fact that there aren't that many clothes for women who are in shape? They're, it's very limited options. The struggle that I hear is, is my favorite thing to talk about because it's a thing that most people don't talk about. How have you compensated for the fact that, I mean, obviously there aren't dresses built for women who are, you know, have big broad shoulders and big arms or they don't have, especially like jeans for women that have really big glutes and calves. How have you compensated for that? 
Um, I don't wear clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I don't really shop that much. I'm not a big shopper. So, uh, Gymshark is what was, a, they had, you know, the brand Gymshark, you know, this brand, yep. they kind of blew up at Gold's, mm-hmm. right? Cause a lot of the girls go there. Um, I really like their clothes cause they, they like hold your waist, you know, so the, and then, you know, your butt looks yep. bigger. So, um, but yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I haven't gone shopping in a really long time, but those were the only leggings I usually wear. <laughs> so one of my, this. one of my things when I started working out and getting bigger and more muscular, one of the things that I found out that was, that I didn't like so much was that people are going to ask me to like move furniture for them more. They're going to ask me to open pickle yeah. jars. They're going to ask me to do all that stuff. Have you had that sort of experience where all of a sudden when you got bigger and more strong, people would all of a sudden say like, Hey, yeah. Joanne, could you come and help me move some furniture? Or help me move this yeah. pickle jar. And how'd you deal with that? Yeah. I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, a lot of times if it was like, so, you know, can you open this for me? Then I would just open it, you know, but I worked at the cystic fab, uh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation in in uh, Chicago, and uh, we would have these big events as fundraisers, and we had to carry a bunch of stuff. So they were always like, "Oh, Joanne, you carry she's got big muscles," and I'm like, "I'm not carrying everything, you know. It's not how it works. Maybe yeah. you should carry it so you get big muscles. Exactly. <laughs> I, exactly. I'm good. Yeah, exactly. So now we go to our audience favorite part of the podcast, the questionnaire that we like to ask. We'll ask her about a dozen questions, get a response. It's sort of a more getting to know you thing. So for our first question, what is your go-to workout song at the moment? Uh, workout song would be, oh man, I teach spin class. So I usually do my playlist and stuff, but I've been listening to Animal by Claptone. Have you heard this song? Yeah, it's good. Claptone? It's good. Yeah. So that's going to be on my class tomorrow. All right. Absolutely. So if you could train with any celebrity on the planet, who would it be? Uh, wow, that's a good question. Celebrity on the planet? Uh, the Rock? Yes. He's our most famous answer. We've had out of all, like, you're the 14th, I think, health and fitness guest. 12 of them have said The Rock. Yeah. So yeah. by far. And now if you could train any celebrity, who would it be? Uh... Would it be? I think I would want to train Pink. Yep. I saw her in the gym once, and she was like, "Your arms are so amazing." And I was like, "Oh my God, you're pink! Like, can we?" You like... saw Pink in the gym. <laughs> she... Pink. Wow. Yeah, she That's was like, awesome. "Yeah." She's like, "I'm sorry for staring at you, but your arms are enviable." And I was like, "And she's in pretty good shape too." Yeah, yeah. I know. That's yeah. why I was like, yeah. "Really?" I was like, "Me? Are you sure?" <laughs> you know, but yeah. it was really cool. She was with her trainer, and her trainer was like, "Well, let's go over here." <laughs> I gotta ask. Yeah. I saw one of your photos, and you got a photo with Arnold. What was that like? That was fun. He's yeah. so nice. Uh-huh. You know, so many people want to take photos with him, so I never. But he actually, uh, you know, I, I I'm always careful of who mm-hmm. in the gym, especially um, respectful mm-hmm. um, uh, of what they're doing. So, but he, he commented cause it was right after the show and I was, and then I said, can I take a picture with you? <laughs> and so, yeah, he's really, he's, he's nice, but then, you know, you got, you, he, you can tell he has boundaries yeah, as well. So, absolutely. um, mm-hmm. which you need, right. Yeah. Especially oh, yeah. Arnold. Like, yeah. You definitely yeah. need. Absolutely. So what yeah. was the last TV show that you binge watched? Oh my goodness. I binge watched Friday Night Lights Ooh. while I was on prep yep. and it was amazing. <laughs> it was like, I was like, oh my God, Coach Taylor is like my favorite person. I was like, this is exactly what I needed, the, the show for my, you know. Well, yeah, I'm probably watching an episode that's really good to pump you up for a workout before ahead of time, really get you motivated. Yeah, yeah exactly. So what is your yeah. favorite TV show though of all time? Um... I think I like The Sopranos. Yes, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, that was a good. And Breaking Bad was really good. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, if you could have uh, lunch or dinner with any historical figure in history, who would it be? Socrates. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good choice. Yeah. <laughs> Got that in common, absolutely. Yeah, in his brain a little bit more, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, what is one thing that you will always find in your fridge? Um. Eggs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So what is your favorite body part to train and least favorite body part? Uh, 
my favorite to train. Well, it's a love hate relationship mm. with legs. Yep. And glutes. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's really hard. Yes. You know, I know it's going to be a hard one. Um, uh, that's the, I really like training my legs mm. and I do like training my least abs. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you train abs? Because I've heard some people that don't really train them at all, and some people just train them all the time, and some people just uh, slow it down like once or twice a week. What is your uh, schedule when it comes to training abs? I used to train them every day, mm -hmm. just do like crunches and then obliques, and then now I just do it like uh, two or three times a week. Oh yeah, that's about that's that's about the time the amount that I do it too. So it's I, I think that's around a healthy amount. So if you could go to any time period or live in any time period on the planet, what would you choose other than this one? Um. I think I would want to live in the twenties. Like do the char before. do the Charleston go to a speakeasy? Yeah, <laughs> and like everything was like so new and yeah. like you know uh, 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 just exciting. I always think about that, but then I realize I was like, okay, any other time period, I'd probably die of a disease by the time I'm 30, or I'd get drafted, or I'd get drafted and die in some war when I by the time I was like 20. So I was like, yeah, I'm 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 content with living here. But if I had to choose, I don't know, probably something like the Old West, I think would be pretty cool. Go around there and just raise havoc out in, out on the open plains. But you start shooting everything. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> I would be the, the I would be the life. guy that I would be the guy that slowly cheats at cards and then gets away with the get, gets away with the money but before they finally realize what's going on. Yeah, I would I, not I would yeah. not be the guy that goes crazy. Like if you've seen Westworld, I would not be the one guy that just goes around and shoots everything. No. Oh, that's good to know, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I know. If I said I was like that, then I'd be like, oh, okay, I need I really need to reevaluate myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Um. Well, I there's a churro ice cream that I oh really <laughs> that just sounds fabulous. <laughs> yeah, it was it's so good. Mm -hmm. I I have to tell you on my on my third show I ordered um, on Instagram through this girl. She was 17. She made she started this ice cream company and um, I ordered a hundred dollars worth of ice cream. That got delivered to my house during one prep, and I after it came after the show, I was like. When did this happen? <laughs> I was like, did I order six pints of ice cream? Okay. So I shared it with people. But, yeah. And how did your friends and family react when you started getting more muscular and started working out? Was it positive? We have a lot of people that have positive, but then there's always some negative. What was your general experience like with your family, friends and family when it came to you starting to adapt that healthier lifestyle? Yeah. Um, I got a, actually a Facebook message from my aunt. My mom is really supportive. Mm -hmm. She, you know, wants me to do whatever I feel yeah. in my heart and she's great um my aunt you know she I was uh doing the leg press and I think I had like 400 pounds that I was leg pressing um and I posted it on Facebook and that's where my family is my aunt sent me a message she's like you have to be careful you know addiction is is a not a good thing and I was like oh I was like what are you addicted to are you okay <laughs> I thought that was my response like yeah. are you okay like yeah. are you addicted to something <laughs> that's a good one is this a cry a for one. help I'm not quite sure what you're referring to, but <laughs> <laughs> I just turned it back on, yeah. on her. Yeah. Well, um, and just like my dad and my parents have always told me is that everyone's going to be addicted to something in their life. And as long as it's a healthy thing for you, it's positive. Like people who are addicted to working out, fine. It keeps them healthy. As long as you're not like obviously there for like 10 hours a day, just like constantly lifting the whole time. I mean, as long as you're there for like a healthy amount and you can work out every day. There are yeah. thousands upon thousands of bodybuilders and competitors that prove that you can do that and still be healthy. Right. So it's 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 one of those things where as long as – I mean it's like I'd rather have someone be addicted to working out than being addicted to heroin or anything like that. So This is my point. But you know what's more understandable is being addicted to drugs and alcohol. That People can understand yeah. that because that's that. understandable. I know. Yeah, it's weird. And And they would also understand it if you were going through something and you chose – to take this dark path of mm -hmm. numbing yourself, right? Yeah. That's understandable. But for me, mm -hmm. getting through it through fitness is what they're like, what's wrong with you? I'm is this this can't be this way in life. Like we can't think this way as a society for mm -hmm. people to think that this is weird mm -hmm. to turn to fitness to help us mentally recover from something tragic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 
I, it's so but, weird because I'd never gotten that moment from people either. Cause it's like, you're healthy, you're strong. Like you can do stuff. You are a, a better life for yourself. You're able to do stuff that you could never do before. And yet people sometimes criticize you. They're like, Oh, don't do that. Don't better yourself. Don't become bigger and stronger and be able to move stuff on your own or be able to just do stuff. And you just feel so much better with all the endorphins. I just think that people are just so uneducated about that. And they really need to be more educated in order to get what it's really like to be that fit and to be that in shape. I mean, it's a, it's a great feeling and people are just trying to tear it down, which is just so ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think that I, I really, I'm so grateful for you mm-hmm. and for this and for, for people like us wanting to, mm-hmm. you know, share this, this information and, and message with, with everyone. I mean, I fought with my sister's doctors, you know, for, and I was like, what about, are you going to give her a diet mm-hmm. or exercise routine with all of these meds? And, and he was like, no, it's, it's, it's easier for people to take a pill than to change their lifestyle. And I was like, no, I, and and from, and I I have the chills right now thinking about it. And I'm like, I am going to prove you wrong. Mm. I was like, this is, and and obviously I can't, you know, who am I to go against brain cancer? Mm. Right. But it, you know, I feel like it it kept her alive longer Mm -hmm. and happier in the time that she had, you know? So it's like, how can you be you, you telling me that people, can, they're not strong enough to mm-hmm. change their yeah. lifestyle? They could just take a pill that numbs them. Mm-hmm. This is this is what's going on. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I just don't. It's one of those things. And I love I always love to bring up this story if we ever get into like a topic area of this was I had a guy who was in a band and he worked at a children's hospice in like Mississippi. So he would see all these sick and dying kids, some of them like five or six years old. And he had to work wow. with them in their last days. And he said, like, he had given up on music and just seeing that inspired him to pursue music again. Cause just because he realized that he's a healthy, fit individual, he should really just go with what he gave. Seeing your sister go through that, did that really help inspire you, too, to maintain that healthy and fitness lifestyle? Saying that I'm so blessed that I am healthy, that I'm in shape, that I have, a, you know, that I'm completely healthy. Did that really just help motivate you even more? Um, it, it did because even at that point when – when she passed away and like when I was going through other, like I was there for three months before she actually passed away. Um, I was not eating healthy. I was working out, but I was, uh, you know, I, I did not look like this. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was, and I have the before and after pictures to show, you know? Um, but yeah, I was, uh, you know, I wasn't working out. I was, I was sad. I was, you know, I did cardio and I was, you know, you're just like, what, what do you do? You know? And, um, so it definitely, after she passed away, it was more like, yeah, I was very inspired to, to help others and, and to get myself back in order, you know, to find myself again. Cause I was so focused on her. One of the things that I also love to say is the nutrition, when it comes to having clients, it's so important because I've heard many a times that clients, they do the workout with the trainers, but then they don't follow the nutrition plans on their own. And then they get mad at the trainers because they think that the trainers aren't doing their job by helping them lose weight. Is that ever, has that happened to you? And how do you deal with that? Cause I can imagine that'll be such a frustrating situation. It, it really is because, you know, if I work out with my clients, twice a week or three times a week. That's three hours Mm -hmm. a week. All of the other time is what counts. Mm -hmm. So especially what you're putting in your body. And there's clients that I say, I'm like, listen, if we work together, I need you to like for the first two or three weeks, I I really want you to send me pictures of your meals Mm -hmm. and what you're eating in the day. Just send me pictures. We don't have to like talk, you know, Mm -hmm. I want to see. And some won't do it. And some are dedicated and they, they want to be held accountable. Cause when you're taking a picture of your food that you're eating and you're sending it to your trainer, that's like, you know, you know, they're going to say something, you know, or, um, or adjust something or, you know, so it's, it's the will you have to want it. You have to want to, to really change. And the ones that do send the pictures, they are successful in losing weight. 
Absolutely. I mean, it is willpower, and it's just such dedication. But one of the things, this nation is slowly, I mean, the obesity crisis is rising. People aren't work exercising as much or working out. Do you have, personally, do you have any tips or ideas of what we could do as, just not just as a nation, but just individually for people, that they could just slowly adapt to our healthy and fit lifestyle? Because obviously there's shows like The Biggest Loser where people lose weight so quickly, they aren't given the proper techniques in order to maintain that weight loss. So you'll see all these people after they lose 100 pounds, They'll gain 60 pounds back in a month afterwards. What are some tips for you in order to, to you know, make it slow for people who are sl- like wanting to make a more healthy lifestyle change? Um, my first thing I say is drink more water. Mm-hmm. Most people drink eight ounces a day. A day. That is insane. Mm-hmm. So if you drink more water, you won't be as hungry. So, and, and you'll eat at the, you know, normal time, you know, you'll, you'll eat at the right time. And plus your, your body is mostly made of water. And the biggest excuse for people who don't want to drink more water is because they have to go to the bathroom all the time. This is what people, and I'm like, so do you not have a toilet or (laughs) (laughs) do you you work it it outside in the wilderness? (laughs) Like, what, what are you saying? Like, is it that much of a big deal to go somewhere and pee. I don't under- so anyway, so that is my first thing. And then, um, portions, you know, like instead of, you don't have to eat everything that's in front of you, but cut it in half. Cause when you go out to eat, I mean, how big are our portions? Where do you live, Ryan? Minnesota. Yeah, so I don't know how big are your portions in Minnesota. We're, we're, but... we're big, and then we have a lot of – there's a lot of fishing around here. So we have – there's walleye, and there's a lot of fish, and then there's a lot of meat too. But it's – Minnesota is constantly rated one of the top two healthiest states in the country. We have a lot of natural bike paths and natural trails that people oh, that... run on. But we do have a really, really big portion size. But it's just a lot more people are more inclined to exercise because I was going to I'll, – I'll lead this into my next question sort of too because – one of the things about Minnesota, I mean, obviously we get probably the coldest winters in the country by far. We'll get, it gets to negative yeah. 20. We have a saying here where you only got to be fit six months out of the year because the other six months you're going to be in a sweater anyway, so who cares? So when you're – so one of the big things is that we like to kind of overdo it in the summer months when there's when it's nice out. You can really enjoy the winter or the weather. So, But being in L.A., have you found it difficult because you are sort of expected to maybe in L.A. everyone's supposed to look fit and it's year-round. You have great weather year-round. Has that been hard for you as sort of also – because you were from New Jersey where it gets cold where you might have an excuse to you know not work out as much. Has that been a difficult adjustment? Um, no. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. I, I, I struggled with the winter and when, um, I, I lived in Chicago Mm -hmm. just to be closer to New Jersey, uh, when my sister was sick Mm -hmm. after I moved out of her house. Cause you know, she has a husband and Mm -hmm. she had my, my nephews and stuff. So, um, I just wanted to be closer and that I thought New Jersey was bad with living in Chicago. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I was going, my sister was dying mm-hmm. while I was living in Chicago. So you, yep. you think of this on top of the weather, on top of me, not knowing one person there. I was so, you know, I was, I, it was, it was a tough time. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, the sun and, and vitamin D I think is so important for the, for people who do live in these colder states and, and, um, you know, getting out, I think you should maintain cause you, you know, you still have to take your clothes off and take a shower. Yeah. So no one's going to see you, mm-hmm. but you look at yourself Yeah, and that is most, most important. Mm-hmm. Who cares if anybody else sees you in a bikini when you're standing in the mirror and you're looking at yourself, do you feel good about yourself or do you feel like, Oh, it's winter. Let me just gain 20 pounds, you know? Mm-hmm. No, feel good all the time. When it comes, I mean, I know you're talking about you have nephews. When it comes to, you know, being a great representative of what females that work out and are muscular look like, how important is it to you is to send a positive image to your nephews to say like, hey, women who work out aren't manly. They're not just like how some people in the media portray. Is that really important to you to just set a positive example for that, for those young kids so that they grow up and they won't think like a lot of people think today? Yeah, it is. It is. It's really important. And um, I'm actually, I'm starting a, a group for, for girls. Um, I think this is so important. Um, and it just came to me a couple of weeks ago and I'm, I'm really, uh, cause a couple of girls came up to me in the gym at Gold's and they were in their twenties and they, they're in college. And I had this other girl that I used to, uh, take care of and watch and cook for and train. Um, and she just went to college in New York. So, 
And they're the, at this age, right? When you're 19 and you're 20 and you're 21 and you're a freshman in college and, and you're, you're, you're used to having your parents wake you up and cook mm-hmm. you breakfast and get you here and go there and do this, right? Now you're on your own. So you have to rely on yourself, on your thoughts, on your schedule, on your motivation to get you to where you need to go. And a lot of times it's hard for adults to do this. Imagine freshmen in college and a new, you know, this one girl, she said, yeah, you know, that post that you wrote about emotional eating, like I, I do this and, you know, I, and she's out here by her. So she moved here from China. She doesn't know anyone. She goes to LMU, yeah. you know, yeah. and like she's trying to make friends and still stay fit and healthy and, and do her homework and not be stressed out and make friends and peer pressure. And, you know, like there's so much that I don't know if the girls or anybody at this age, you know, boys too, have the tools to, to deal with this, to get them to, to class on time, yep. to get them motivated to go to the gym or to, to eat, you know, chicken and broccoli instead of the, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what you eat, but I only did it because I scheduled every class after 10, 10 AM. I couldn't get up earlier. So I just, I had to do that. But when, right. when you're adjusting to, when you're helping people adjust to that lifestyle, how important for you is it to them that they just have that positive mindset? Because that mindset can be everything. What are ways that you use in order to help people, you know, keep that positive mindset on days? We all have days where even people, people like me who don't go as hard as most people in the gym, like I still work out four to five times a week. I still have days where I feel like a zombie and I don't want to go in there. What are ways that you use for you and your clients in order to just motivate yourself and say, hey, we're going to the gym. We're getting a workout done. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just. It doesn't have to be like what I what I would normally say is it, it's not going to be like the best workout every single time. Right. Like sometimes you'll have like the great workout and you'll feel so good. And other times it's like you're barely making it. There were times when I would go see my client and they're like, you know, just struggling emotionally, physically. They're tired. They're drained. Their body is changing and they're, you know, they cut some carbs to lose some more. You know, like it's. And hormones, especially girls, you know, yes. I've come <laughs> so, to realize that. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's like the biggest thing, right? Mm-hmm. This was my, so there were one time I, we just sat in the sauna. That was a, one session. Like, you know, we just sat in the sauna, sweat and talked. And that was what she needed at that time. So you have to listen to your body, but you also have to push yourself. And, and if you do have a trainer or, you know, even for yourself to, to know the difference, You have to know the difference of like, yes, today I'll take a rest day and be okay with that. Or today I I need to just go for 20 minutes and do walk on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. And as long as you did something, you feel good about it. But whatever choice you do make, you, you have to feel good about it. I, I love to answer this question because I get it all the time. I've had you're my I think you're my 14th health and fitness guest on, and I get it all the time. They say, Ryan, why do you have only women on? Why don't you get a guy on there? Two reasons. Number one. Whenever I get a guy on here, this is how guys talk about how they work out. Hey, bro, how much do you lift? That's it. Then the discussion's over. It's not too much. It's not too much. It's not too much substance. It's not like, oh, where do you work out? Like, what's your cardio intake like? What's your blah, blah, blah? It's just that. And second of all, women are at such a sort of just a disadvantage overall, first of all, because you don't have the, the natural testosterone. And there is still that stereotype. Like, in your competitions, like you were talking about, you were worried that you might get too big where then the judges would say, like, oh, she's too muscular. She's too – that's just so unfair to me because with guys, it's like I always describe it as driving on a highway. Guys just have a straight lane where they can just go as fast as they want. Girls just have to weave and wobble a little bit to get along. How do you deal with that? Because I know sometimes when you're working out, you do you ever have times where you think like, oh, I don't want to work out as hard because I don't want to get so huge that I get so you know big and muscular. How do you deal with that mentally? Because it is so unfair. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's it's always a struggle. And I, I, I think the the more I eat the bigger I get, you know, so that's a big thing. So it it doesn't matter. I can, I can lift, uh, you know, a lot of heavy, you know, I'm leg pressing 400 pounds. You know, I don't think that, I mean, I'm a tiny person. So, um, but yeah, if I eat more then then I'll gain more muscle and that's, that's basically how it works. Um, so you have, you know, you have to really monitor your food. Well, I do. I monitor, you know, everything and my calories in. And, and if I want to build muscle, I will eat more like right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just balance. It's all, it's all balance. And the guys, you know, 
Yeah, they they just want to build muscle. Yep. So for girls, there's like, and and I'm so thankful that I get you know even people at the gym. They're like, you're still feminine. <laughs> I'm like, oh thanks. They're like, you look great. Like you you're, you're muscular, but you're still feminine. Absolutely. And, yes, absolutely. And that's and that's this is what I want to mm-hmm. you know uh, maintain. So I'm not you know I'm not gonna sit and like really like you know I I would never do steroids. Yeah. I would never do like I it just I, I that to me is. Mm-hmm. It's not worth, you know, it's it's not yeah. worth my emotion, hormones, like I'm too scared. Um so yeah. I I don't I don't know if I answered the question. Oh yeah, not. absolutely. I mean, as much as it is for me like I am I appreciate, you know, women who work out and stuff like that, but for me even there is a limit and that limit reaches I mean, there's very specific qualifications, but I won't really go into it, but where you can tell that someone is just so pumped up on stuff, so just out of yeah. control where I'm like, okay, and, and for guys too, I mean, even the guy bodybuilders where you're like, that guy is just drinking gallons of steroids a day or just doing everything he can where yeah. it's just, it's just like, yeah, I, 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 which I, is I, fine. Yeah. I, I have, yeah. To, oh I, yeah. More I, power to him. Yeah. If that's what you want to do mm-hmm. to yourself. Like none. Yeah. No judgment. Um, and if that's what, if, mm-hmm. if those are your goals yeah. too, to be mm-hmm. like, you know, even for women, those women bodybuilders, yep. like they have to do that to get to that. And more power to them. It's just, it's one of those things where like, you might not agree with them, but hey, you respect what they do. And you just say, hey, you work your ass off too. Yeah. More power to you. I wouldn't do it myself, but you know, I support you and what, and what you do. And that's, you know, what it's all about. So we have a few questions here before we wrap it up. What is the future looking like for you? Are you planning for another show? Or are you just training people? What's it, what's it like now? Um, so I am, I'm training people. I'm teaching spin. Um, I am training for another show. It's go- going to be next summer. Um, Universe, it's called, uh, which I love the name. <laughs> I think that's why I picked that show. And it's in New Jersey, so I'll be going back to my home state. So I'll win that show there and be Miss Universe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's the next one that I will do. So I have some time now to relax. Um, I'm also um, aligning myself with... Um, a makeup company, a beauty, it's called Beauty Counter, and they, they are really um, sending safe products out to women to use makeup, and because I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if people, uh, our skin is like the biggest organ on mm-hmm. our body that like sucks up everything we put, even the lotions we put on, you know, so the parabens and the sulfites, it, it, like all that crap that, it makes a, it makes a difference. We're, we shower every day, mm-hmm. I think, most of us, right? Well, yeah, hopefully. But <laughs> maybe hopefully. some people like, golds don't. <laughs> some people go old school, yeah, and I'm like, oh, you know, you give yourself an axe body, you give yourself an axe shower, and I'm like, oh, I'll tell you, come, exactly. on. <laughs> come on. But, you know, you use these products over and over and over, you know, and, and, and first of all, I don't even know why they're even out there if they're bad for us. It's like organic and not organic. It's like, why are, why, so chemicals or no chemicals like mm-hmm. things you know like how about no chemicals mm-hmm. overall yeah. so uh, that's another thing of mine but i like that they're called beauty counter and they're it's a great company so i just started with them and then this girls group that i'm i'm meeting with i'm starting this is like such a small this is like just the beginning so i'm meeting with one girl on saturday and just kind of you know questions like you know, the Socratic method mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> you know, just gather informa- information from these girls because I really want to there's I, I really I have such a strong passion in in helping and coaching and 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 getting their mind right you know and if it's like they you know girl you know the the outcome is they look amazing mm-hmm. then great but it's up here is where I want to zone in mm-hmm. on with these uh college kids yeah you, uh, have, girls. you have such like a open personality and you're so you're spunky and you have a lot of energy. Have you always been like this or is it, has, has it been something that you sort of developed when you got into a better lifestyle? Because I know people that have co- changed completely personality wise, they've gotten more confident, but have you always been like this even before you started working out? I, I was mm-hmm. until I had like a dark mm-hmm. period <laughs> and then I, I think I lost myself mm-hmm. and I, you know, while I lived in Chicago, I, it was like a good two years, probably when my sister, you know, that whole time I was, I was lost. I I couldn't understand. I was angry. I didn't know why, you know, what, you know, what, um, and now that I have, um, yeah, more energy and, and then come, come to this phase and where I feel like my, I can, I can also help others, stay positive and happy and light it it 
it makes me want to, um, you know, kind of share my light with everyone as well. So now I'm more myself and more confident now yep. than, you know, so we, so we have to honor wherever we are in our lives, right? So I do honor that phase because I think I needed to experience that to get to where I am. As painful as that was, I am here now and and that's the, this is like why I wanna share this message and, and help these girls as well to get tools to be strong. That's awesome. So one of my last questions here is, I always wondered, uh, I was gonna ask you ahead of time, how tall are you? I'm five two. At least okay, a bit yeah, because I was gonna say because this works out perfectly because I have never had this. I'm six two, so I'm naturally just a tall guy. So, I, but when you're going to the gym, obviously people see you. They might see like your muscles, but they see sort of a short person. What is that feeling like if people are sort of looking at you and then you max out on something and you lift really really heavy and then their face kind of drops? Have you ever had that? And what's that feeling like for you personally when you kind of show up those people? Yeah, um, yeah, that has happened, I think, on the leg press. Mm -hmm. And then also, like, I could do a good amount of pull-ups, mm -hmm. so that's usually impressive. Um, the guys are usually, they, they like my forearms. Guys usually comment on my forearms. <laughs> they're just like... Guys are usually weird that. with that, too, where, like, women will be something, but guys are usually specific with stuff. Yeah, they're like, oh, you have great calves or great forearms. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. one thing that I found out, too, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it makes me feel good because I'm like, look, I'm like this little girl, mm -hmm. you know, who can like lift all this weight yeah. and I'm not like this huge bodybuilder because mm -hmm. like, all the girls are like, oh, I don't want to lift too much weight because, you know, I don't want to get too big and bulky, you know, that whole thing. I used yeah. to think this way too. I, that I'm was like, my next question I was going to ask you. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I used to tell my first trainer, I'm like, I don't want to go that heavy because I'm going to, you know, get, I don't want to get bulky because I, I was, I had a lot of fat on mm -hmm. my body. That's why I looked bulky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but gaining, you know, building muscle, muscle is smaller than fat. So, you know, once you lose the fat and then muscle will burn fat. So you want to mm -hmm. go heavy to, to build the muscle. And then when it repairs, it burns the fat. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you shrink. Yeah. Could you give us a flex real quick? I was going to say for people, that is what it looks like when you're, when you're actually working out and not just, and that's not what, that's what you're going to look like if you work out clean and natural when you're, you're not going to hulk out and become Dwayne the Rock Johnson if you no. lift, lift the weight. And that's the thing that women still believe in this day and age, which I think, you know, it's gotten a lot better with Instagram. And one of my last questions is with Instagram. How how good is that for you been beneficially knowing that when you post stuff, I mean, it's such a tight-knit community in the fitness community. When you post stuff, people are usually really, really positive. How much does that help you when it comes to motivation and just inspiring you yourself? My mentality about Instagram is mostly because, you know, I just, I post stuff and afterwards I, 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 I can get, if it's a vulnerable post, I can get a little insecure. I'm like, oh shit, did I t say too much? You know, and then I'm like, I... Listen, and then you can spin out thinking about social media, which is not productive. But um, my mentality is if I can help one person, if one person can relate to this story and they could be like, wow, I'm so glad to know that somebody else is going through this because that's what I'm going through and they're combating this. One person. I don't care. I don't need 40 million followers to what if I can get one person to change something in that moment in their mind i'm happy absolutely absolutely and i mean i cannot commemorate you enough for what you're doing people needs people like that they need someone to really help them lose weight and it's such an important thing today so for our final two questions if someone were to walk up to you on the street and just say hey i mean obviously you look great i want to look like that what would be your best piece of advice to them when they're starting out in order to be successful and not give up patience mm-hmm it's patience. It's really patience and self-talk, self-love, patience. Um, cause I, I think fitness, it's the only thing that you can't have right away. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing if you're like, I, you know what you could buy, you could buy this tomorrow. You can order something on Amazon. It comes the next day. You can Google, you know, everything is right now. Mm -hmm. Fitness, weight loss, patience. Yes. You must Patience and consistency, right? You have to be patient and consistent. It's the only way. Mm -hmm. It's the only way. And you have to have willpower too. <laughs> what would be your best piece of advice that you would give your 18-year-old version of yourself if you could talk to her? 18-year-old um, version. Yeah, I would say that not to care what anyone thinks. 
um, to, to come to yourself, you know, self love is first and, and to, to do follow your heart and what makes you feel good. And, uh, you know, I, being kind and loving, like I, I make pancakes and I give them out to people at the gym all the time, probably cause I don't want to eat them all too, but like, I want to like share with people and, um, a- afterwards I, I feel so happy, right? Like being kind and loving, I, I feel like makes people feel good, but no one really does it because they're, it's fear, right? So I would also tell my 18 year old self to have no fear and to believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. That is what I would say. Like no matter what, whatever, whatever you're dreaming and visioning. And I mean, I moved here to California when I was 25. I didn't know one person. I had no idea what I was doing, but I did it. And I was like, I'm going, I don't know why I came off the plane and I was like, I belong here. This is where I belong, (laughs) you know? And it's like 3000 miles away from where I'm from. But I knew, and what, it doesn't matter how I was going to make it happen. I knew that this is what was going to happen. So just the will and and just believing in myself and having no fear and and going for it. and and that's exactly basically what I what I did. I mean, yeah, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I mean, we've learned so much and you have just such a great story. Um where can people contact you other than Instagram? Do you have a website for your personal training? I don't, but I I am going to start um I'm going to get a website and then I, I, I'm in the process of building this yeah. thing with the girls and my website and, and my brand, you know, so I haven't quite, you know, gotten there yet because it's, I, I know what I'm good at <laughs> and it's like fitness and like that part, I'm still kind of like, so I met this girl at the gym who I, I'm going, we're going to work out together and she was like Instagram marketing, you know, so she she's really good at that and I'm really good at that. So, and, and this is like, I'm like, thank you. Like I've been asking, I'm like, I need help. I'm like, I don't know how to reach people. I was like, that's the same thing. I'm like, I need a podcast. I need to talk. I need to like get my message out. And, and here you are and here she was. So it's like putting it out there, you know, it's funny. Cause I, I sent a message to my nephew. You talk about, you know, the, cause he's 18 or he's just in college. And I was like, he was always saying like he was going to jinx something if he said it, you know, he didn't want to, he didn't want to want something so bad because he was afraid he's going to jinx it. Mm-hmm. So I sent him a message. I was like, don't be afraid of jinxing thing. Like put it out there. If you want something, put it out into the universe and just say, say it out loud, talk to people. It's not jinxing. And he was just wrote back. He's like, you're crazy. I love you. I was like, I don't know where that came from, but I had to tell you. He's like, you're crazy. I love you. <laughs> so I feel like as long, even if they think I'm crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Something sunk in, mm-hmm. I think. I hope. Yeah. So this is this is what I am saying. And we're gonna we're, this podcast here. We're gonna support you every bit of the way with your business. I mean, it was an absolute delight talking to you. We learned we learned a lot. Like I said before, and everyone go follow her on uh, Socrates Fitness. We'll leave the link down below. She's such an inspiration, and we've learned that you know you are. We, I just can't put into words how appreciative we are of what you do with helping people. There are more people in this world that need to be like you, and it's just it was amazing to have you come on. We can't thank you enough. And again, Joanne Socrates, is there anyone else that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap it up here? Uh, shout out my mom. Yeah. Her birth- it was a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, mom! Happy late birthday, yes, to Joanne's mom. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So, and again, you guys, Socrates Fitness, Socrates Fitness, I'll leave the link down below. We really appreciate Joanne coming on here and we su- will support you anything of the way. If you need anything promotion wise, just send me an email. I'll be more than happy to promote it for you and help you out. It was, it was just awesome having you on the show and we wish you honestly nothing but the best. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this, and I'm grateful for you as well. Absolutely. So this is Dee Dee on the Spot, Ryan Johnson, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.